Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Gear Talk and this time I'm going to talk to you about this beautiful camera that is the Hasselblad 500CM. Before we begin, a little message. If you want to support the channel, please put a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, share the videos with your friends and uh, um, if you want to go a step further, check out my books. The last one is Inject Fine Art Printing. It's a technical manual about uh, fine art inject printing. You will find uh, all the information you need uh, to create fine art uh, inject prints, uh, starting from the description of the technology to color management, uh, the choice of uh, inks and uh, papers, how to set up the drivers and all these kind of things. So it's a very complete manual. Uh, I got very great review on the Italian version, so check it out. And uh, if you want something lighter or you know everything about the inject printing, lasting photographs, this is a novel that I wrote, is getting very great reviews on Amazon, so check it out, uh, very nice book. This said, let's talk about the Hasselblad 500CM. This camera is one of the camera I really love. Uh, I got this uh, when I was uh, still an amateur, uh, pretty young age, around 18 probably, and uh, then I expanded uh, on my Hasselblad system when I became a professional, and it was uh, a big part of my job. When I didn't want to use the view camera, uh, I, I needed something more uh, light and more fast, to use, I use this uh, uh, baby. So it's really a great camera I love. But uh, what is important to say about Hasselblad is that if you get an Hasselblad, you don't get a camera, you get a system. This camera is absolutely fantastic because it is modular. And uh, the Hasselblad uh, V-series that is uh, this uh, Hasselblad with the uh, central shutter and so on were created in 1957 before Hasselblad had the 600F, I think, uh, sorry, the 1600F uh, camera that was uh, with the focal plane shutter, but the camera had uh, kind of a lot of problems. So in uh, 57, uh, Compur came out with a shutter for medium format and large format cameras. Uh, Compur had a lot of experience with uh, small format cameras, so on the Zeiss you can find uh, a lot of uh, Compur shutters. When they came out uh, with a medium format shutter, uh, Hasselblad started to think that it was the moment to change the system. So they made uh, a deal with uh, Zeiss. Zeiss is the official producer of all the Hasselblad lenses and uh, they created a camera that is built uh, in some way around uh, the Compur shutter in the lenses. As I said, it's a very modular system. If you take a look at the camera, you can first of all take off the lenses and this is a, a big part of the camera. As I said, there's the shutter inside, so all the synchro uh, for the flash, uh, the self-timer and everything is in the lens. Um, by the way, the quality of these lenses is pretty impressive and I will tell you something more later. But uh, if you take off the lens, you have the magazines, the film magazines, that are another modular aspect of the camera and you can choose uh, different kind of uh, film magazines and uh, one of these uh, is the A12 that is 12 poses 120 film and you can have option with the 2020 so with 24 poses if you find a film around right now it's almost impossible uh, there's a 70 millimeter uh, magazine that is to take photos uh, with long rolls of 70 millimeters film it's uh, that huge magazine that you see on the camera that went on the moon so that's there's a magazine for uh, 4x5 4.5 by 6 uh, and others like the polaroid so this is a part of, of the modular system. And what is great to have these magazines is that you can change the magazine and so change the film uh, during, also when the film is not uh, ended. So you just uh, 
there's this light protecting the the film from the light so you can just take off one magazine put another and go on and it's also very comfortable uh, in a fast uh, pace environment uh, for example when i was uh, assistant to a wedding photographer a lot of years ago with the dinosaur's time as i used to say uh, it was very one of my duty was to just uh, you know reload the magazines and uh, so the photographer when he ended the film he just had to take off uh, basically take off the magazine put it down get the new one put it on and was something very fast that didn't interrupt the shooting so this is uh, uh, really a great thing to have in the camera as i said the modularity goes uh, uh, in everything uh, something as this crack handle it, you can just take it away and change it for example with this that is uh, uh, an exposure meter so you have an exposure meter that tells you how to expose the film inside here and uh, you can see this this is a little bit uh, broken not just a little bit is a lot broken the plastic uh, the meter still is working because the camera was on a tripod and fell down and luckily uh, all the impact was absorbed by this and the camera didn't got damages because it's a pretty pretty nice and sturdy camera so you can change even this you can change the viewfinder in this case uh, is the uh, with level viewfinder but you can change it with the penta prism uh, with uh, 45 degree angle 90 degree angle view um, there's a chimney with the fixed uh, loop so you can be very precise in focus and it's fantastic for reproduction and this kind of things and uh, so this is something that you can change in the model m because in uh, 57 Asseblad came out with the 500c and the 500c had uh, a fixed focusing screen and a little some little differences inside but with the 500c m it is a modified version the what that came out in the 70 1970 uh, you can change the focusing screen and in this case i have the acutmat focusing screen that is the brightest one uh, produced by us the latest produced by us and it's absolutely beautiful so if you are looking for a nasa blood 500 go with the cm uh, the difference in the focus screen is really really huge so if you can afford it go with the m version as i said it's a modular system if you look at the camera when without the accessories the lens and the other things it seems just a, a very light uh, and uh, empty box with just a big mirror inside and these two curtains in the back uh, by the way these two curtains has nothing to do with the shutter as are just there to protect uh, uh, the film from the light when you change the lens so this uh, uh, body seems uh, nothing in reality is the mechanical brain of all the system uh, when you take the picture uh, it does a lot of things uh, uh, obviously rises the mirror and opens the back uh, curtains but uh, it also does a lot of other things because um, when you click uh, you release uh, release the shutter and it checks that uh, it checks that the back uh, of the camera doesn't have uh, this slide inserted so you, you don't risk to take pictures without exposing the film it resets this, uh, this little spot that is uh, red when the camera is not uh, cranked and is white when the camera is ready to take pictures uh, so this is uh, something just when you press the shutter but uh, uh, when you crank the camera there's a lot of things going on because uh, you can see that uh, it's not just rising the mirror but uh, here you have the gears that uh, advance the film so they connect with the magazine and advance the film in front uh, there's this uh, gear here that is coupled with uh, this gear in the lens and it uh, loads the springs in the shutter so that's uh, a lot of things to do obviously it resets uh, all the indication 
of um, for the film and everything else so it's really really uh, a fantastic camera to see inside because it's all mechanical it is in some way very very simple uh, you look at the mechanism are um, something that is fantastic because it's all simple gears and levers that get together but it's very complex in a way that uh, it must be set up perfectly correct with all the right alignments or it will not work and uh, that's uh, a problem when you buy used camera a lot of time the camera was uh, fixed uh, maintained if we want uh, by someone that was not really uh, an expert uh, for example I have a magazine here that uh, I just got uh, online and uh, it was supposed to be working perfectly but uh, sometime it jams uh, uh, here it jams uh, when it's connected to the camera when you load the camera it jams a little and that's exactly I know what it is because I mm, met that problem many times it's just simple that uh, a little gear was not set up perfectly inside so uh, after some shots you get this aligned it uh, get this a little little bit every shot and after some the sum of this alignment just uh, um, block the camera so it's a very uh, simple system but very precise and when you buy one uh, it's worth to take the camera and send it uh, to some uh, Hasselblad uh, lab and have the camera cleaned and looked again uh, don't do it yourself unless you are very good in repairing cameras and very precise because something that I see around the problem that they see around of these cameras is that the lubrication was done in the wrong way with usually too much uh, oil and grease and uh, often with uh, oil and grease in the wrong places and it's something that uh, can uh, uh, ruin the camera or better you have to get the camera and disassemble it to the last uh, screw and uh, clean it up and reassemble it is really something uh, expensive in terms of time and effort so um, don't do it yourself just send it to be cleaned around also if uh, people is tempted because you can find them find the maintenance manual online but that's not really something to do if you are not uh, really uh, strong another thing that I want to say you uh, since I'm looking at it right now uh, a curious thing about Hasselblad is that uh, from the serial number you can see the years it was produced in a very easy way um, if you write down VH pictures and uh, write uh, below VH pictures you can write numbers corresponding to the letters so one two three four five uh, six seven nine zero uh, and you look at the correspondence and when you look at the serial number the serial number starts with two letters in this case for example is U R, and U R is uh, U corresponds to seven and R corresponds to zero so this camera was made in 1970 so the first year of production of the M series and by the way I bought it used it when I was a kid and uh, uh, still this camera looks pretty new and fantastic and it's impressive how well the leather stayed uh, on the on the camera and uh, didn't shrink and all these kind of things I had uh, some newer camera as the 500 uh, 503CX uh, uh, back there that uh, after a while that was stored in the box uh, I took the camera out uh, and the glue was all uh, became oily and all the leather was uh, the leather that actually is plastic uh, shrink another thing that uh, I love about Hasselblad in general in uh, is that uh, it's there's always a retro compatibility uh, of everything uh, you get uh, the newer cameras all those cameras and you can exchange uh, accessories uh, you can use the same lenses and that for me is something absolutely important
it's the reason why I choose Pentax uh, on the 35 millimeters because I like the fact that if you have a K mount lens you can use it on every camera even the most modern camera for Pentax or even the digital cameras now and um, without many limitations and so that is absolutely great uh, if I look at something as uh, Leica R that are so people love Leica uh, for example they change the system of the camera to read the, the aperture uh, many times so uh, if you have older lenses they don't work as well on the modern body and all these kind of things um, Hasselblad kept everything compatible and that is a fantastic thing because you can just buy a piece, uh, a camera, uh, a lens uh, and then you can expand uh, with uh, how much you want and that is what I did uh, when I started as a professional because I, uh, as I said, I had this uh, camera with me and uh, after that, uh, I bought other bodies, other lenses, and so on. So, this is the camera, perfectly modular, perfectly compatible with all the Hasselblad accessories. And uh, it's really uh, a great uh, camera. One thing that I want to tell you is when you put a lens uh, on the camera, by the way, this needs a cleaning, uh, when you put a lens on the camera, it's essential that the camera is loaded and the spring here in the lens, uh, the, um, the shutter spring is loaded because uh, this little gear has to fit with uh, this one and uh, if they are not aligned because one is not loaded you cannot uh, put the lens on and something that I saw many times and made me really wow uh, upset is a lot of photographers especially uh, new photographers uh, that they in certain lens they feel that it is not perfectly right and they try to force the lens on if you feel some resistance uh, more than usual there's the resistance of the spring but if you feel something more don't force the lens on the camera or you really will break everything so that's point but uh, the durability of these cameras is impressive. Uh, I got uh, an uh, 500 ELM that was for spare parts uh, and uh, after a ton of years, I don't know the, the years of the camera, I think it's from the 70s, I didn't check the number, but uh, uh, now it was just a matter to open the camera uh, lubricating, cleaning and lubricating the side, synchronize, the, uh, regulate a little bit the synchronization of the uh, motor with the, with the shutter and everything was perfect. So our cameras that uh, with some care can last uh, really uh, more than a lifetime. So really beautiful, beautiful cameras. What to say about this camera that I personally uh, like? First of all, uh, I like the sound. I know it's noisy, but I like the sound. And by the way, this is noisy because the mirror has to flip up and um, the curtains has to open and all these kind of things. But uh, uh, this can also cause some vibration in theory. So if you uh, need to take pictures with, without vibration, there's a standard feature on the Asblad that uh, is this, you click, uh, it opens, uh, pull up the, um, the mirror, opens the back shutter, uh, put the lens with the aperture and the working uh, aperture and close the shutter. At that point, the only things you have to do, if you press the button, the only thing that will work is the shutter and that is very very silent obviously when you release uh, there will be the noise of the back curtain coming down so this is a great feature uh, something that is uh, essential in Hasselblad are the lenses and the quality of these lenses is absolutely impressive the lenses there are the C series and the CF series the C series is uh, uh, 
the one you see in here and is the original this 80 millimeters is a c series and you can recognize them because they have this uh, beautiful metallic focusing gear the aperture and uh, shutter speed are coupled together and uh, you select the ev value and just change the couple uh, shutter speed and aperture and to disengage uh, the coupling you have to Put, push down this, um, push back this uh, lever, and you can move uh, uh, separately shutter speed and aperture. And I really love this feature. Um, I like that if accidentally I move something, I still have the correct exposure. So uh, I really like this. And another thing that I love about this. Uh, C series lenses is the scale here you can see the scale of the depth of field that moves uh, uh, when you change the aperture so it's very visually easy to see how the depth of field changes with uh, changing the aperture so beautiful lenses uh, the C series there's the initial series that is uh, not uh, uh, multi-coated for, to avoid reflexes but still works great I have a 50 millimeter and it's a really a great lens uh, but uh, after they did the T-Star series and the T-Stars as the multi cutting so this is the C-series lenses and it's my preferred style after Hasselblad came out with the CF series and here you can see the 150 millimeters and you can see the difference first of all the focusing gear is uh, the standard one uh, with uh, rubber that you can see in all the modern lenses and the aperture and shutter speed are not coupled unless you push this button so you can move them together and the uh, depth of field scale is gone it's uh, just with these uh, imprinted uh, aperture numbers on the barrel but uh, it's uh, kind of gone uh, the positive things of this uh, is that they have uh, if you like infrared photography they have uh, a sign for infrared focus that uh, i don't see on this kind of uh, of lenses so very very nice and uh, the quality it's fantastic uh, absolutely the sharpness is perfect the autofocus is very nice and i'm not showing you pictures here because uh, i will try to do something about the lenses and so I'll show the pictures in the case uh, but uh, you can just uh, check around uh, and look online if you think looking online is a is the good way to do it what i always suggest is when you want to evaluate uh, a camera the film camera is uh, not just uh, look uh, at uh, photographs and negatives that have been digitalized and scanned digitized and scanned but uh, go to look some exhibit where the prints uh, were made with uh, uh, the traditional analog process and chemical process and there you will see uh, the difference it's really uh, something that uh, it's difficult to evaluate uh, uh, for example the color rendition of a lens uh, if uh, uh, you have uh, a scan that can be manipulated in many ways so also for the sharpness uh, i see a lot of times uh, images online that uh, wow this is seem sharp then you uh, open up zoom in the picture and you see that uh, it was a lot of uh, uh, sharpening was added to the image so it's not something that uh, you want to have when you choose a camera so uh, I don't share it here, uh, I don't put here the pictures on YouTube uh, and um, just to see something that can be really digitally faked. Uh, just look around in your place, in your city and look if there are exhibits or uh, photographers, all photographers, uh, uh, there's plenty of them around and if you go to talk with them and tell I'm an I have an interesting film and they did film at the times, uh, they probably have a lot of prints uh, to show you and they can show you a lot of things um, and uh, usually retired photographers are very happy to show you their 
pictures and talk about their job. So that is what I suggest if you really want to evaluate the camera. Don't trust uh, what you see online. Uh, go to check for something that is analog and printed in an analog way. So, by the way, uh, back to the camera. Fantastic camera, the lenses, the C lens, serial, serious lenses, they had the bayonet in front of the, the to attach the lens shade and the filters, that is 50 millimeters. So, for example, here I needed an adapter because I had the lens shade, was the lens hood was not uh, the original for this lens, it was for the uh, new CF lenses and these uh, 60 millimeter diameter. So, this is something that is an adapter that you need. The lens hood always on your camera. It's impressive how much the quality of your images, the sharpness, the, the micro contrast will uh, improve using the lens hood. So that's the thing. Why Asselblad? Why I love Asselblad? Uh, first of all, I love how the camera stays in my hands and uh, here also i see a lot of people that is not uh, using Hasselblad properly the way to use Hasselblad is uh, to put the camera in your left hand with your finger ready on the trigger uh, you have the other hand to crank the camera to change all the parameters and finally you can click this is a very uh, easy way and if you use the camera in this way the camera is pretty light, very well balanced, and uh, it's uh, very, very comfortable. I was surprised when I took the camera off my uh, storage after I made a mistake when I converted to digital, to switch totally to digital. And uh, after years, uh, I started to think uh, uh, I needed film back because I missed something with digital, but uh, I stayed away from, uh, from film for some years. And when I took the camera back, I was uh, worried that, okay, do I still remember how to use it? And uh, this just was perfect in my hands. Uh, all, everything was in the right place. So very, very well designed cameras. Another thing is that these cameras are really uh, lightweight. If you compare them with uh, other six uh, medium format, for example, the Mamiya RB67 or the Pentax 67 that I have, they are really heavier. This is a kind of a very nice light camera. So, something I really love about the Hasselblad is the square format for two reasons. The first reason is that I really like uh, as a composition to have uh, a frame that has not uh, an intrinsic dynamic. Uh, when you do something that is horizontal and very horizontal or very vertical as the two third that we use in the, in the small format, uh, you give a dynamic to the composition. But uh, the square format is pretty static. So you can compose the image and create the dynamic that is purely inside the image. And another thing, I like that uh, to have images that are static. I'm not uh, uh, really fixated with this uh, modern thing that the image must be dynamic in a way. I don't want to imitate uh, the movies or these kind of things. I like it when uh, also when an image is static. So the square format give me the option to choose if I want inside the frame, if I want a dynamic or not, and the direction of the dynamic because uh, with, this, with the rectangular format the direction of the dynamic is given by the format. So that's something I really love. And another thing that I really like, I like to have uh, the uh, waist level finder because I like lower point of views and I like uh, to keep the camera like this. For me, this is the perfect way to compose. Uh, I love when I, for example, I do portraits or I do this kind of uh, photography. I have a subject in front of me that is a person. 
I can uh, talk with the person, I can look here, they continue to see my face and I can uh, really relate and there's not the camera between us so it's uh, just uh, you look at the person uh, especially if you have the camera um, on the tripod but also in your hand you just everything was okay you look at the person you talk you see the right expression and you click and the person is there with the camera in front of you uh, that uh, relationship is gone so I love that and the square format is because if you have uh, a rectangular format you have to decide between horizontal or vertical so you can tilt but then you don't see the camera inside and the cameras as the RB67 they have the back that you can tilt and you can decide to have the camera uh, in uh, the format in one way or the other but uh, it makes the camera really uh, large, heavy, and uh, is not something that I like. I prefer to have the square format, and if I need, I know I can crop uh, uh, during the prints to give a more rectangular aspect ratio. So this is something I love about this camera. And uh, this said, uh, I don't know, it's just uh, that uh, I don't know if it's the camera, uh, basically I start, uh, I used to start my professional career, so I'm kind of uh, in love for this camera, but uh, it's just, uh, it's a great, great camera in all aspects, and uh, it's my preferred one in medium format. I have a Pentax 67 that I bought a couple of years ago, uh, I really like that camera, but uh, it's a totally different philosophy and at the end of the game uh, I always come back to Hasselblad because uh, I love to be able to switch the, the film magazines and do this kind of things and uh, the format the compactness of the camera and uh, all those aspects are much more appealing to me than the Pentax 67 also if uh, I have to tell that the lens quality is uh, impressive on both of them uh, Pentax 67 have a really, really, really great lens quality with the sharpness and autofocus and so on. So I'm not saying one is better than the other, it's just that this one fits my style a little bit uh, better. And I think this is all about the Hasselblad 500cm. Beautiful camera, get one if you can, beautiful medium format uh, system. Uh, really great, great, great modular system. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to support the channel, uh, please again put a like, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. And if you want to do something more, uh, check out my books uh, like this that is in Jet Fine Art Print that uh, I just uh, published uh, a few months ago. So, thank you for watching. See you next time with other tools and other gears.